as NASA researchers, what we're trying to do is we're trying to push the boundaries of what conventional wisdom says is possible. We're inventors, we're explorers. We're trying to create new opportunities. Um, so, you know, it's a challenge. I don't think there's one specific personality type that necessarily makes a good researcher. Uh, now that said, I think there are some specific characteristics that help. To start with, you must be open-minded. Uh, we are dealing with ever-changing uh, problems. You have to be open to uh, tackling uh, these new uh, challenges. I think a, a good researcher encourages uh, differing points of view or, or people challenging ideas. So you don't go in with a preconceived notion of how you want your research to come out, but you're, you're willing to, to, to look for the truth and see where, where the truth actually is. Uh, you know, any, any problem out there that's easy has probably already been solved. So if you want to do anything of significance, you're going to have to be tenacious. A researcher has to really be willing to push forward. We're solving hard problems. Sometimes the solutions that we come up with just don't work. And so when that happens, you have to be willing to try another solution. You have to be willing to fail spectacularly. And you have to uh, be willing to get back up after those spectacular failures and go right back at it. Some people can be very daunted by this, this oh man, like how are we ever going to get past where we are right now? Uh, and you can't be daunted by those big tasks. You have to actually embrace them. And I, I think the best researchers are the ones who actually get kind of excited. That, oh, this is a really hard problem. And, and their, their eyes kind of light up and, and they want to work on it because it's hard. You have to want to ask the questions of how does something work, why does it work the way it does, and then take a step beyond that and say, how can I make this better? If you think of research as a progression of ideas, you have to know the ideas of the past in order to create the ideas of the future. But you also have to have a modicum of disrespect for those ideas to think that you can do better that things can be improved upon, because otherwise it's just engineering. You're just using the ideas of the past to you know, create something new. And that's different than trying to either improve or disprove the ideas of the past. You have to have some idea that I'm gonna come in today and you know what, this hasn't been sitting right on my mind. I wanna try something else. And most of the time, you don't find anything. But if you don't have that spirit of maybe this isn't right, then you're never gonna find anything. You're always gonna get pushed back. Um, that's the nature of scientists and engineers, we're skeptics. Just because you stand up there and show me your results doesn't mean I have to believe it. I'm gonna push back a little bit, make sure it stands, stands up on its own, not just because you tell me. And so you have to be comfortable with sort of a little bit of uh, friction in your life all the time. You don't have to be inventing the, ne the next, you know, mega computer. Or, but you're always in your job, everything that you're doing, you're looking for better ways to do it, more efficient ways to do it. So I, that's what I see a researcher, someone that's inquisitive, someone that's always asking the question, why? Is there a better way to do this? And that's all it takes. But it's, it, it's a great opportunity to help change the world. And, um, you know, maybe at small bits at a time, but I do feel like that's what we're doing. <laughs>